Hello, DAZN fans and fans of football as well. If you're passing by, I am your host, Adam Monk, and this is another instalment of Football's Hottest Takes. Now, yeah, two episodes ago, I said Atletico Madrid would get to the Champions League final, and in the previous episode, I said that Harry Kane and Bayern Munich would knock Real Madrid out, and then Harry Kane would win his first Champions League final. So in terms of the Champions League, I'm having an absolute stinker, but I've got one more in me. First, though, we're going to talk about Liverpool. So without further ado, let's crack on. Sorry, it's really hot in my room at the moment because it's summer and I am living in an attic. So we're very apt for this series. But uh, yeah, anyway, Liverpool, let's go. So yeah, when I say fall off a cliff, I mean that quite short term. Don't get me wrong, I do think like the good times will come back to Liverpool. I don't think they're gone forever. But I think the fall off when Arnie Slot comes in instantly will be quite sharp. Then there's the contract issues and potential departures leaving in the summer, which could leave some big voids in the Liverpool team as well. So let's take a look at that. Expiring this summer, you've got Thiago, who isn't really a footballer anymore anyway. And then you've got Joel Matip, who has been, of course, a great servant for the club and Adrian as well. But then this is where it gets really, really interesting. You've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, Mohamed Salah and Virgil van Dijk's contracts all expiring in June 2025. Now, Trent Alexander-Arnold is being scouted and touted to join Real Madrid in maybe a year's time when his contract expires or perhaps this summer as well, although I think that's a bit of a reach. But then Mohamed Salah and Virgil van Dijk are the wrong side of 30 now. So maybe Liverpool will be looking to move those players on. Of course, Van Dijk might go on a cheap to someone like Borussia Dortmund. He's been linked there. But Mo Salah, you know, you know, a, a Middle Eastern player, a Middle Eastern superstar, an icon, you would suspect that the Saudi League will come back in for him and have him as a bit of a poster boy for that league, which would warrant a bid of maybe 70 to 100 million pounds, which I think would be very, very difficult for Liverpool to turn down. But then that, of course, leaves the massive void of goals that Mo Salah leaves as well. So I think Liverpool will drop for that reason too. Maybe he'll stay though. But look, end of the day, I just think no matter who Liverpool bring in, it's pretty much impossible to replace what Jurgen Klopp brought to that team. The man was a symbol of the club and the city by this point, And he'd actually done so well pound for pound against Pep Guardiola's team to have won the silverware that he did and to have made City have to be competitive in so many Premier League seasons as well. So the void that Klopp will leave will be irreplaceable, but you know, hopefully for Liverpool fans, the drop-off isn't as steep as, as I think it'll be. But maybe I'm biased, you know, because manager coming from the Eredivisie to a top-level club, we've seen this before. <laughs> Now look, don't get me wrong, Real Madrid are the favourites for this final, I'm not completely deluded, but Borussia Dortmund deserve a hell of a lot of respect for getting here in the first place. Any team deserves to be in the Champions League final if they get there on merit, and what I do think is interesting about Borussia Dortmund and why I think they've got a chance against Real Madrid is actually the two scorelines in the previous two ties they've played and how contrasting they are. So Atletico Madrid and a typically defensive side, the tie ended 5-4 in favour of Borussia Dortmund, and then Paris Saint-Germain, a traditionally very attacking team, of course, with Kylian Mbappe, that ended 2-0 on aggregate. So ultimately, what this shows is an insane amount of discipline, tactical flexibility, adaptability within games and to how teams are setting up, you know, to stop PSG from scoring and then taking the chances when they come and then to opening the game up against Atletico Madrid and almost inviting Atletico Madrid on to come and attack. They played both ties absolutely perfectly against completely different systems, meaning however Madrid set up, Dortmund will have a plan. And as for Real Madrid, well, we've seen them scrape past Manchester City. I'm still not bitter, by the way. And then, controversially, get past Bayern Munich as well. Again, I'm not bitter. But what they did in both of those games was pick their moments. And they kind of sat back for large parts of both ties. And then they are so ruthless on the break. And Ancelotti really lets his attackers play with a hell of a lot of freedom, which benefits them with the creativity of Bellingham. You know, the sort of... The... What, what word can I think of... The spontaneity of Vinicius Junior on the left-hand side as well. They've got a hell of a lot of attacking talent, which should make them favourites and will make them favourites. But I do think Dortmund will have a plan. And if you think about it, right, because Real Madrid are such heavy favourites for this game, they'll be expected to take the game to Dortmund, to attack, to be on the front foot for the whole 90 minutes. And this actually, not counterintuitively, but it could favour Dortmund in the same way that they played out the PSG tie. Also, I love a narrative. So I will say that Dortmund have a chance because it's Marco Royce's last game for the club as well. Sometimes football works like that in romantic ways and teams get their happy endings. And I think this could be one of them. I'll give them 
25% chance, maybe. And I think that's actually quite a big chance considering the disparity of the teams on paper. But Dortmund have really, really impressed me. Yeah, this one's going to annoy a few. I don't just hate Real Madrid, by the way. <laughs> They're both phenomenal players, and Musiala and Bellingham grew up, of course, through the ranks in the England team. So that narrative and debate has always kind of been there from the age of, like, 14, 15 years old. That narrative and debate is also there as well, because Foden's better than both. But I do think this debate will rage on for years. And all right, Jude Bellingham's had the more flashy and lavish year with more headline grabbing goals and etc, etc. He's really lived the, you know, the kind of the, the, the dream, I don't scenario. If you were a child and dreamt up how a footballer would have a career path, he is living that right now. So he's grabbing the headline, scoring big goals and late goals too. But on the eye test alone, I do prefer Jamal Musiala. He's in the top percent of players in the top five leagues in Europe for successful take-ons per game with 4.1. And he's in the top 2% for successful take-on percentages. So he takes on so many players, but beats so many players as well. It, it truly is obscene. And here's the contrast, right? Get a load of this. So compared to Jude Bellingham, he is in the top 36% of players in the top five leagues in Europe for successful take-ons. And then his success take-on percentage is 88%. So the drop-off is absolutely stark when compared to a pure dribbler like Jamal Musiala, who, who really knits everything together and commits fouls. And it feeds into Jude Bellingham maybe having better goal-scoring stats, which we will look at shortly. But yeah, Bellingham's more of a second striker and it's something that maybe I don't like to watch on the eye as much. I don't know, maybe it's just down to personal preference, but I think Bellingham is more of a second striker and a bit more of a goal scorer, whereas I think Musiala is the whole package. He's got 17 goals and 6 assists in the Champions League and Bundesliga this season, whereas Jude Bellingham has 23 goals and 10 assists in the Champions League and La Liga, which obviously maybe on the surface would say that Jude Bellingham is a better player, but he is playing in a different position on the football pitch like I said earlier as that kind of second striker and to me to watch I prefer Jamal Musiala and to be honest he has been I know Harry Kane's been the, the headline grabber and of course with the big money move and the top goal scorer at Bayern but I think pound for pound you know costing Bayern Munich no money coming into that team playing that 10 role and contributing so well for Bayern this season despite the poor season they've had I think he's Bayern Munich's best player certainly most valuable Anyway, yeah, I can't really criticise Bellingham. It's not a criticism of either player. I just prefer Musiala and think that he is a slightly better footballer. Anyway, we'll see what happens at Euro 2024. Anyway, I'll see you in another couple of weeks when the Premier League season will be concluded. We will know who has won the Champions League and we'll know who has won the FA Cup as well. So, uh, yeah, I'll have some new ones for you then. And then, of course, we're on the cusp of Euro 2024. So speak soon. I've been Adam Monk. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Goodbye.